Welcome back to the DYS F4 video series. Look in the description below for a link to the playlist, as well as other helpful videos that you may need. Now let's talk about connecting a S-Bus receiver. For this example, I'll be using the FreeSky XSR, but everything I do with the XSR will apply to the X4RSB, uh, the X8R, uh, any other FreeSky S-Bus receiver. Also, the uh, Turnigy and FlySky receivers, and I've never used any Spectrum products, but I would imagine it's the same. So first let's talk about the pinouts, because uh, there actually is an error on this fly controller. I'm holding this in the same orientation that DYS has uh, used for their wiring diagram. As far as ground, both these pins are ground, as well as these two pins on top. Then one row down. Uh, both of these are the 5 volt power pins as well as both of these pins. So go ahead and wire up your ground and power. Now if we look down, this pin which my white wire is going to, this is the receive pin for UART number 1. The pin just above it is the transmit pin for UART 1. Now on the wiring diagram that they have provided, this pin right next to the UART 1 receive is also the receive for UART number 3 and the pin above that is the transmit pin for UART 3 but both these pins are actually flip-flopped uh, they're backwards so the bottom pin is actually transmit and the top pin is actually receive so keep that in mind you also have UART number 6 receive pin here and UART 6 transmit pin here so now for the SBUS signal wire the F3 processor flag controllers uh, they have inverters on all three of the UART so you can pick and choose whatever UART you want. On these F4 boards, uh, at least all the flagging tours that I have tested so far, they only come with one hardware inverter and the inverter is located right here. Because it only comes with one hardware inverter and that inverter is tied into the UART number one uh, receive pin, you have to use this pin where my white wire is going. You have no other options. Unless you want to watch a video that I have already made where I cover how to uninvert the SBUS and telemetry signals from the FreeSky XSR and X4 RSB. I'll leave you a link to that video in the description below. If you do uninvert the SBUS signal, then you can use any UART receive pin that you want. Now for telemetry, which is this black wire. Uh, because the F4 flag controllers only have one hardware inverter, we have to uninvert the telemetry signal if you do want telemetry. Though, if you don't want to use telemetry, that's completely understandable. I don't because the built in on screen display is the best on screen display on the market right now. So, I have completely stopped using telemetry. But, point being, if you do want to uninvert the telemetry signal, which I have done on this XSR, and I also uh, showed you in that other video how to do it with the X4R SB. Uh, once again, just watch that video, link in description, and I, I cover everything that you need to know. So now that I have uninverted my telemetry signal, I can place this on a transmit pin, which is where this black wire is going. And uh, like I said, these pins are flip-flopped and backwards, so that's why I have it wired into the receive, because it's actually the transmit. Now it's time to go into beta flight. If you have not yet bound your receiver, you need to go ahead and do that. If you don't know how to bind your receiver, I'm going to leave you a link to all of my uh, FreeSky transmitter video series in the description so you'll find all the information you need there. If you're using a Turnigy or FlySky receiver and you're trying to get SBUS to work, uh, what I would actually recommend doing is I've already made a video just for you guys and we use iBus instead of SBUS. Uh, for one, because iBus is better than SBUS. Two, you can use iBus on any UART you want. You don't have to uh, iBus does not care about inversion, it just works. So look in the DYS F4 video series playlist where you'll find that video. So now I'm going to plug in my USB cable. I am also going to plug in a LiPo battery because the USB cable does not provide 5 volts to the 5 volt pins to power the receiver. My receiver is getting the solid green light, meaning I can continue. Uh, at least for you FreeSky guys, uh, other receivers use different colors, but I'm just saying I'm good to go. If you're not getting the saw green light, then uh, once again, look in the description to uh, just find the receiver, the playlist for your receiver, and I cover everything you need to know. 
I even cover how to change firmware should you need to change firmware. So now let's connect to Betaflight and we want to go to ports. Because we put the SBUS wire on your one because that UART does have the hardware inverter, we're going to turn on Serial RX. And then if you chose to use telemetry, uh, I placed my telemetry wire on UART 3, so I will come under here and choose what type of telemetry I'm using. Uh, if you're using a FreeSky receiver, uh, any X series of FreeSky receiver, then it's going to be smart port, not FreeSky, so keep that in mind. And then save and reboot. Reconnect, go to configuration, scroll down, make sure you have serial based receiver turned on, and down here choose SBUS. Then save and reboot. Reconnect, go to receiver, move your sticks around and they should all be moving on your screen. Test your switches out, we're good there. If your uh, roll pitch on throttle is not moving on your screen, then it could be many different things. Either you, first off, check the version of firmware. I know for a fact that Betaflight 3.1.7, which is the newest version of firmware at the time you're recording this video, SBUS does not work because the processor is not telling the hardware inverter to uninvert the signal. So uh, I'm using 3.1.6 right now. Also check your pins, make sure all of your wires are going to the correct pins, and uh, you know check your ports tab, check configuration tab. Another thing you need to check is go to CLI, type in set inversion. This will give you a few different choices. And you want to check SBUS inversion to make sure that's turned on. If it's turned off, then you need to type set SBUS underscore inversion space equals space on and then press enter and then type save and press enter again. And then you can go back to receiver, test it again and it should be working. Okay, now for telemetry, we want to go back to configuration, scroll all the way down, make sure you have telemetry enabled, and then save and reboot. Now, I don't know about you Spectrum guys, because like I said, I don't own any Spectrum transmitters, but for you Tyrannus QX7 and X9D guys, you want to go to your model selection page, then hold down the page button to go backwards a page to telemetry, scroll down, and then press enter on discover new sensors. Press enter again to stop discovery, and there you go. There is all of your telemetry sensors. If you don't see VFAS, which is your voltage, make sure in Betaflight, uh, in the configuration tab, you have uh, VBAT enabled. And if you do want current, make sure you have the current meter enabled. So now if I discover new sensors again, I get uh, my current sensor. Uh, just keep in mind the voltage sensor is pretty accurate. Mine was only off by one tenth of a volt. I do have a video in my Betaflight series of videos showing you how to calibrate your voltage sensor and the current sensor is going to be way off. You do have to calibrate that, absolutely. And you will also find my video on how to calibrate current sensors in the same Betaflight playlist. That's going to do it for today guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.